What's up everyone, Zunabra here coming at you from the power of the internet. No, I'm just kidding. What up everyone? Uh Zunabra here coming at you with another episode of the Zona Podcast. It's a weekly thing now, it's every Sunday. What up, what up? Hope you guys are doing well. Today we're gonna talk about a few topics um that I want to pursue. We're gonna talk about oh wait, wait, let me just fix that real quick, guys. I'm so sorry, wait, wait, because the autofocus on this Logitech um webcam isn't the best so let's do it now so we're going to talk about the words we're going to talk about how it's going for now for our american and european teams and other teams as well uh, i'm going to tell you my experience as a viewer uh, i'm i'm going to tell you a little bit about the viewership and how words are not so successful anymore it's it's crazy and even mean like as i see myself growing up like um I'm so I was so hyped for the finals of EU and NA, and then boom, the start of words. I was like, oh my god, dude, is League of Legends boring or something? What the hell is going on? So we're gonna talk about this. Um, we're probably gonna talk about other stuff if I think of anything else. But right now, I really want to start talking about the teams and standings for the uh, World Championship. So it's not the World Championship yet. I want to say they call it that way just to hype you up, but it's pretty much the the pre pre like show i want to say where like it's only teams that have like a last chance to get on words it's not the best level of play it's not super entertaining and frankly the viewership shows that oh my god nobody actually wants to watch that shit so if you haven't watched so far group a and group b played clanon is doing super well 4-0 gambit esports is sucking hard like what the fuck on my predictions guys i really wanted to see them succeed i was like yo i love gaming sports i'm so happy to see this name this company this organization edwards and bro and they just like even edward gaming like the support was like he tweeted uh gg uh gg leon or gg lion whatever you call this brazilian team uh team uh gg uh, lion we suck literally like we suck the guy like it just says we suck. He qualified. He worked so hard, and what the fuck are they doing? If you guys are seeing this, if you guys seen those matches, you know what I'm talking about. I wouldn't advise you to watch the replays because honestly, it's pretty boring, and nobody wants to watch that to be honest. But it is just the level of play is so ridiculous, like from what we're seeing. And to be honest, for now we only have a gasp of like what's gonna happen. Let's say like Klein9 is gonna win or Klein9 is gonna be qualified for words. The level of gameplay for now, I mean, Clannon looks very good, but again, Dire Wolves, Dire Wolves or Team One Esports, those are not like reputable teams. Clannon is only playing against teams that are equal or really below their level, so there's nothing really impressive. But what I want to talk about is, um, so this play-in groups, whatever, whatever the whatever the F, whatever the F it is, just to keep it. Uh, advertiser friendly shout out to youtube uh it is it is really boring and it, it is really boring and it shows how much of stuff like they want us to see and how much like how much content there is about league of legends because right now it's literally like a roller coaster of like of hype like lolly sports is a roller coaster of hype and right now we are bound to go down 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 and we're about to go up right as the group stage semifinals finals are gonna are gonna get to but the mid season like the just the everything between the semifinals uh everything between the like out of group stage to finals i would probably watch that as like I would watch every second of every minute of gameplay. But any for before that, I'm like, bro, what the fuck? It's so boring. Like, no and nobody can uh, nobody can watch that much of League of Legends. Like, you guys can be a fan, you can have your team, right? Like, that's that's no problem. Like if you want to follow only Klein 9, you're only gonna watch Klein 9. But it's so hard to watch everything. And I feel like this is a problem that I wanna address because I feel like in esports at least uh, this is a problem we're having that actually Overwatch is trying to solve, but Overwatch has its own issues. Uh, it's that I feel like nobody really relates to a team, um, and I feel like some teams have trouble getting their fan base on. Like, I, like what I'm trying, what I'm trying to say is that when I came to the to America, like to the U.S., when I came here for college, uh, I've 
encountered like I made friends and stuff I meet met people and they were like oh my god like we're so fans of uh, San Francisco Giants or um, Bay Area uh, Golden State Warriors for basketball um, it does this and that like they're really like they have an attached to like their teams because they live there and all the bars are showing the TV and all the flags and all the festivities right so coming to the US coming to San Francisco where I live now It was super easy to become a Warriors fan or Giants just follower, I guess. I'm more of an NBA guy, by the way. Shouts to Michael Jordan. But it is, it was easy for me. And every time now that something happens, every time I see, like, uh, the Warriors on TV, I just watch the game or, like, we do something with my friends. We just go watch the game in a bar. And somehow, like, your location makes you feel attached to this team because, like... All the people around you are with you and they're routing for you and like it's more of like a group thing and it's just it's just very nice like it's a nice feeling as a supporter or as a fan you could say and i feel like this is what esports is lacking right now it is really the attach of like oh well my dad is my dad grew up as a warriors fan so i'm gonna i live in san francisco and i'm gonna be a warriors fan right now like tsn kind of like they're trying to acquire fan base but It's hard for them to, I guess TSM is kind of different though, because TSM is really good at that. TSM has been so good at just like getting fans out there and just like showing appreciation and just like cultivating this fan base for so many years now. And it's, it is really crazy when you think about what they've done, like what a good job they've done over the years. And they've been around since season one, they've always won or been done second place. That also counted, right? But when it comes to all the other teams like um, Clan 9 or Gambit Esports or Fnatic, Fnatic has a huge fan base as well. But I feel like people are less attached. People aren't going to be like, okay, I'm going to watch every Fnatic matches and that's it. Like, they're trying to watch, like, good gameplay. I feel this is what they're, like, in the priority is, like, they, ra they would rather watch a good Clan 9 against, like, Gambit Esports than watch the Fnatic game. Uh, even though they have the jerseys and they're super fan of Fnatic. I don't know what you think about that. Maybe that's just me tripping or whatever. But let me know what you think in the comment down below. Uh, I just feel like what Overwatch is trying to do is to lock a team to a country or to a city, sorry. And I think this is very smart because it could bring people locally into offline events, into blah, 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 into this, this, and that. And really cultivate the fan base in a smarter, in a much, much smarter and organic way. Just like, hey, like, you live here, you go to this bar to watch events, you're gonna meet people that are like the same team as you, you're gonna root for the same team as, as people around you, and it, it just flows like that. Maybe esports is just too small for that, because, uh, or just the audience is too uh, young for that. That also counts, because when you're a 10 year old, when you're a 13 year old, you can only watch Twitch, right? It's not like you're gonna go to a bar and like party with your friends and stuff like that. Like, there's not like viewing parties, but. We, we start seeing this, and I had a thought last time is that uh, TSM is based in California. I think they're, they have, like, offices in San Francisco, and they're not sponsored by Razer. That's, that's the thing. They're sponsored by Logitech. But I was like, there's a Razer, there's a Razer store at Westfield uh, Mall in San Francisco. I did a video about that, by the way. Go check it out. And I was like, maybe they could do it, something like TSM, X Razor, blah, blah, blah. And every TSM match will be broadcasted into this so that people, kids, etc. could go there and watch the match. Like, they have a huge screens, like, massive screen where you could watch um, the matches. I watched uh, the International in 2016 there, and it was really, really, really cool. So right now, guys, words are kind of boring. That's, that's, that's literally what I'm trying to say. Um... They're kind of boring. I'm not watching it. Nobody's watching it, to be honest. Like they, I think they reached, they barely reached, uh, reached. Sorry, a hundred thousand viewers. I'm just gonna watch now if there's like a rebroadcast or a broadcast of it. But phew, it's kind of sad when you think about it. It's kind of sad. And my uh, the the French studio I used to work on, they have like barely some. They have barely like ten thousand viewers. I saw, or maybe like twenty thousand viewers. I'm not sure if I came to a to a peak. But right now, there's like, yeah, there's a rebroadcast from Riot Games to the official uh, Twitch channel at 20,000 viewers. This is very, very low. And honestly, one thing I said on Twitter, and I had a discussion with some uh, some of you guys, by the way, 
Uh, if you haven't already, go follow me at Zonabra. The link should be down below uh, if you're watching this on YouTube. And it's, I think, I, I sincerely think, like, I'm, I'm truly, like, after thinking a lot about this, is that for so many years, like, for all the years, basically, we had an Asian team in finals. Asian teams in finals. Uh, China, Korea, basically. China and Korea. And... Like, at first, it was really introducing the highest level of gameplay that someone could possibly imagine in League of Legends. And so we discovered Faker, we discovered Deft, we discovered Samsung, we discovered SKTT1, we discovered all those big teams, uh, even the Taiwanese teams. Uh, oh my god, what's this? Taipei Assassins. Oh my! I almost, I almost forgot the first, the first world champions. Taipei Assassins, TPA. We discovered all those amazing players, right? And that was really nice. Like you go from watching like uh, local tournaments, national tournaments, boom, boom, boom. You go to four, first world championship. You see Korean player rocking and stuff. Like you like, oh my God, Faker's a god, whatever, whatever. And Faker wasn't even there yet. And that was so surprising, that was so like, what the fuck, like, oh my god, those Koreans are so good, this is so good to see, this is so entertaining. And the more we saw them, uh, like, ripping, like, just like, straight up, like, like, not even making it look too easy to win uh, against European, or against North American team. That it makes North American and European supporter feels like shit. Like, most of them feel like, what the fuck have we been watching? Like, for the LCS, I thought that was good. And now I watch Faker, like, shitting on them. Like, they were, like, 10-year-olds. So that is good. And basically, like, it really kills the competition. Like, it, and this is something I said in so many of my videos. One being, uh, NALCS sucks, and this is our fault. Uh, go watch it as well. It's really cool. I think I think it's so relevant, even after, like, how many months or years that I did this video. Um... Uh, it is just like now that we like we're used to seeing all, so so much Koreans and so many uh, Asian teams in general, whether it's China, Taiwan. Uh, I'm not sure about the Japanese, but Korean teams. Like my my, my tweet was like, if we're gonna see another finals that is Korea versus Korea, Korea versus China, or China versus Korea, it it, it is gonna like. Like League of Legends is gonna die. Like lowly sports is gonna die. People not people are not gonna come back. Like imagine, just imagine if we see TSM not even passing group stage. Let's just see. Let's just see. Like I want to see what the hell. Uh, group stage. Group stage. Let's just see who is on right now. So we have G2 Esports. Let's say G2 Esports doesn't. I mean G2 Esports. Oh my God, they have Roll Never Give Up and Samsung Galaxy with them. This is gonna be some hardcore shit, dude. Like, this is gonna be hardcore. Uh, okay, let's not put too much stuff on G2A Sports. Let's say TSM doesn't come up. They're against Misfits and Flash Wolves and uh, To Be Determined. So, we'll see who's gonna be, but this is not gonna be a big team anyway. TSM is seed one in the Group D. What if they don't, what if they don't come out of, like, group stage? Who is gonna watch the World's Championship except the finals? Who is going to watch the uh, semi-finals between like AHQ and Longzu, for example? I'm going to watch it because I love esports, I love League of Legends, I love like all that stuff, and this is like the highest level of play. And obviously, like, if they win, if TSM loses, it's because, well, they suck. And like, Asian players are just so much better, Korean teams, Chinese players, Chinese, Chinese and Korean teams are just so much better. And it's deserved. Like, I'm not saying it's fucked up. I'm just saying, like, it is what it is, but it sucks. Like, it is what it is, but it clearly sucks. And I wish we could see some more competitiveness uh, from the teams that we see all the time in regular season, like, whether it's um, European or North American. And right now, like, you see Edward Gaming, Edward Gaming, AHQ, SKTT1 in the Group A. That Group A is going to be absolutely insane. Like, what the fuck, dude? Oh. <gasps> Edward Gaming, AHQ, and SKTT1 for the group one. If, like, who is going to take the, the rank one there? Is it going to be like... I don't know. But the group A is going to be insane, to be honest. And I feel like this is something that they're trying to do. Is that... I think, like, Riot Games understands that in a way. And they're trying to put, like, NA teams... At least NA teams. That's so weird because NA teams are doing so, like... They're pretty chill in group B and group D. 
But then you go to Europe and you see like G2 Esports with Roll Never Give Up and Samsung Galaxy. You're like, holy fuck, how are they going to do it? Like G GLHF. <laughs> and then like Group B have Immortals with the uh, Gigabit Marines and the Lungzu Gaming. They can probably get like rank 2 on this group stage. But TSM is like free to run. So I'm not saying that Riot Games is like cheating the draw. I'm just saying that right now, any teams have no excuse to get out of group stage. If any teams don't get out of group stage, what the hell is going to go happen? Like... What, what's going to happen? Like, tell me, guys. What is going to happen if TSM doesn't get out of groups? And I think this is so interesting because, obviously, League of Legends is not going to last forever. Like, this is this is, this is is what it is, right? Um, it, I wish it could become an official sport and stuff, but I don't think that, like, uh, in 10 years, we're going to have, like, what, 200 champions, 220 champions? Like, this is not going to happen. Like, it's probably going to exist... But it's probably gonna it's probably gonna be made irrelevant by uh, Riot Games itself. Like they're gonna understand one day that they're gonna have to change it out. Uh, hence the game, the company being uh, called Riot Games and not Riot Game. Um, they, they they have to work on something else. Like they have to plan the future because this is something that is so important. Is that if like yeah, like people are not gonna watch it if. Occidental countries like um, Occidental region do not work out and do not perform and do not make their fans proud. Because honestly, if if we were to see like what was the wait, let me just see something what was the in 2015 it was SKTT one against uh, can I see SKTT one versus Rocks Tigers okay Rocks Tigers Rocks Tigers won against Fnatic three zero. SKTT won once again. Origin 3-0. That was insane. That was I think that was the best year of esports. That was clearly the best year of esports we had. 2007, 2015. 2016, SKTT1 beats Rock Tiger in semifinals 3-2. Samsung Galaxy against H2K 3-0. Damn, it's crazy how Europe does so much better in international events. Absolutely insane. Finals, uh, Galaxy against SKTT come. Five game best of five. That was absolutely insane as well. That was crazy. That was really crazy. But it's again, it's like China against Korea. China against Korea. Korea against Korea. Korea, Korea against Korea. 2017, guys, we're going to see what's going to happen. But I'm really scared. And I don't want to prolong this podcast any longer. If it's a short one, it's a short one, whatever. But it is really important to see how um, the viewership is going to decline and decline and go up for the finals. But I sincerely hope that TSM, that... Uh, that Immortals, that G2, that Fnatic, that Clan 9, that uh, Misfits are going to perform and just going to be out there showing their best performance. Because not only Words is in freaking China right now, making it so hard for Europeans, making it a little hard for North Americans because it's just a night. It's a night and it ends kind of early, kind of very uh, late. But in Europe, it starts at like 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. And it's like, what the hell is that? Like, you're a European. Like, you want to see a team fanatic? Who the fuck is going to watch that? So right now, not only is it happening in China, so it's hard for us to follow it and just to watch every match because I watch, like, obviously, sorry, we have stuff to do. It makes it hard because there's so much content. It makes it hard because we know that Koreans are going to perform way better than the North Americans and Europeans. It makes it so. It makes they make it so hard to follow it. Like they make it way, 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 way too hard. So we're gonna see. We're gonna see what's gonna happen. Uh, this is a world championship again. So may the best team win at all time. Um, I don't think. I don't think SKTT one is gonna take this one. But I don't think it's gonna be a North American or European team. Even though I want it so much. Like, I want it so much, dude. Can you believe TSM winning the World Championship? Can you believe... Like, just... Okay, then I'm going to end the podcast. But just imagine what happens if TSM wins the 2017 World Championship of League of Legends. Just imagine the hype. Imagine the hype around that. Like, League of Legends lowest one will never be the same if that happens. And I think Riot Games knows it. TSM knows it. Everyone knows it. TSM winning the World Championship like a 3-2 amazing best of 5 against like whatever Korean team you want to put against like SKTT1 um, or Chinese teams like Roll Never Give Up insane best of 5 insane game 5 TSM winning destroying the Nexus 
people will go wild. People will go insane. Like, we're going to see, like, 3 million concurrent viewers in Twitch. That's what it is. You get SKTT1 versus Rockstiger, uh, versus, uh, non Rockstigers. Let's say Edward Gaming, uh, SKTT1. I don't even know if that's possible. But let's say SKTT1 against, like, World Never Give Up Finals. It's going to be viewed. Like, you're going to see maybe, like, 800,000 viewers, 900,000 viewers, maybe a million viewers during the game three, game four, game five, like going up, 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 up. But dude, you have TSM getting into the finals, even just getting into the finals, like that would be insane. Even passing the semifinals, that would be crazy, dude. You know it, it will be crazy. And I just cannot wait. I cannot wait to see what's going to happen, but I just have so much like doubt and like, I have no beliefs in all those teams. Like, I, all throughout the team, all throughout the seasons, like TSM, STSM, it's always here. And then you go watch SKT, uh, you you go watch LCK with SKTT1, all those like Korean Chinese team in LPL, and you just see, bro, you just see that difference in level. That is like, you can't deny it. Like you cannot deny it. You cannot ignore it. Yo, what up? It's your boy Zonobra here. Forgetting that I pressed the fucking mute button on this freaking mic that you see here. Look at the duct tape. Like, I try to not press this mute button all the time, but it just, it just happens, happens, it happens all the fucking time, and I hate it, and I want a new mic. So whatever, guys. I was just talking about how uh, I was working on some videos on this, like, last muted minute. Uh, and I just wanted to you guys to know I was very I'm very still very patient about uh, waiting for the new game that I'm gonna do on YouTube uh, on a daily basis or like Twitch or whatever. Uh, so stay tuned on that. Uh, I also talk about like PUBG and how you guys should play it because it's really awesome and there's a lot of hype around it and it's really like the time to play it with your friends and all that stuff. And yeah, I'm working also on a mobile. Um, on a mobile video, like a mobile game video, because we're seeing a lot of like MOBAs coming up on uh, on the App Store, and I'm getting a lot of ads on YouTube about those, and I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna try them and give you my honest opinion about those, and maybe I like, do it like a general video, like here's me like pull up my phone, and be like, oh guys, I have an amazing idea, like. Shut the fuck up, dude. Your mic is muted. So, yeah, that's basically it, guys. The podcast is over. Here's to the conclusion. Cheers. Bubba bless. Hello. All right, guys. I'm going to end the podcast here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, guys. I'll see you for the next episode next week. Take care and look forward to my new content with words and all the videos I told you about. Cheers, guys, and see you next time.